Oh, no daddy? It's not danger. I can die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> my name is Krishna Kharka Chetri and my student ID is ABNN3014. Today I'm going to discuss on a case of Road and Traffic Authority, New South Wales, which involved in a tragic event that, uh, that regrettably uh, happening so, uh, many often into our society. Uh, the case concerned Philip Ferris, who was rendered partially paraplegic when he dived off from the bridge in, uh, into the river in northern New South Wales. This uh, tragic accident happened in 1998 uh, during the school holiday when the plaintiff was just 14 and a half year old. The evidence uh, established that the Road and Traffic Authority in New South Wales were well aware of the dangerous behaviors uh, that many young, young teenagers uh, engaged in, which were jumping off from the bridge uh, into the river. That despite the common practice having, uh, having continued for many years, uh, there have apparently uh, been no, uh, no record of injury since the bridge was been built until the plaintiff had uh, a fatal, fatal dive. So um, my plaintiff will be come here uh, and then, and then uh, he will narrate his story into his word. The field trader was just uh, after 14 years old, he was just uh, Order, order. Thank you, everybody. This is the case of Roads and Traffic Authority of New South Wales against Philip Deder. Councillor, please start with your argument. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Deder, you just tell us what happened on that day with you. Your Honor, I was walking on the Foster Tonkari Bridge uh, of New South Wales, uh, Australia. I, while I was walking on the bridge, I saw the river. Uh, you know, Your Honor, I was uh, the, the fund of swimming, uh, and at the time I was in the age of 14. Uh, that's why I couldn't control myself and I jumped onto the river. Uh, as a result of this, I became injured. Uh, uh, although I, ha I had seen uh, two uh, pictographs uh, on either side of the bridge, but I didn't care about that uh, because I loved swimming at the time that I, I couldn't control myself. Uh, so now I want to claim to uh, Road and Traffic Authority New South Wales uh, because they had uh, bridge its uh, duty of care in filing me to warn about the variation of uh, variation depth of the river as well as uh, the railing was horizontal. That's why it's made easy to uh, uh, climb it on that's why thank you my client mr dedder has already told us the fact what really had happened with him on that day as he was walking on the breeze he had an idea of jumping into the river even though he saw two pictograph signs on either side of the breeze he jumped into the river thinking that it was not as dangerous to jump into the river and get entertained as road and traffic authorities of new south wales must be aware about the possible dangers of variable depth of the water under the breeze but they did not put enough information about the dangers of variable depth of water below the breeze as my client was just 14 years of age he could not decide whether it was right or not to jump into the river from the breeze your honor the railings on the breeze were horizontal and it made my client not only my client it can make everyone very easy to step on the railings and jump into the river so they should have made the railings vertical to avoid this kind of incidents in the future and moreover they have breeze the duty of care to my client mr Deder, by not informing or warning him a lot about the possible dangers of variable depth of water below the breeze that's all thank you your honor thank you Prati, for all the comments now after hearing all this um, this court could say that both rta and the council are negligent they both owed a duty of care with all these people including you who jumped and die off important to know that for both defendants it's not enough to ignore the fact that everybody was ignoring the signs they should go beyond 
the sign. They should put more sign. Either they should think about modifying the bridge. Because of this, the core, this core, help that both the con uh, the council and the roads and traffic authorities breach a duty of care in three important points. First, they fail in putting words like danger, shifting signs, and variable death into those signs. Second, they didn't replace the, the existing handrail. And third, they didn't modify the flat top of the handrail, making it more difficult to step on. However, it is obvious, obviously, the responsibility of the defender. This court held with 25% of contributory negligence to the plaintiff, and the responsibility will, will be apportioned like this, 80% for the RTA and 20% for the council. Thank you. Ruling. There was two more ruling in the High Court. Later, RTA appealed to the High Court, which was successful by a bare majority of vote by three and two. In reaching the decisions, the court considered the nature and scope of the duty and care owned by highway authority uh, to the pedestrian, and as well as the appropriate standard of care owned by the person who was failing to take care of their, uh, of their own safety. At the end, the case was closed with contributory negligence where uh, RTA and uh, the plaintiff were 50-50% of responsibility for their own cause. This is the end of the story.